landforms known as desert landforms so our topic is the arid landforms the landforms made by wind and therefore the name as i if you remember the earlier lectures aeolian landforms where the wind is one of the major major agent of erosion now obviously the wind is a major agent of erosion in the desert only why because water is not present even the ice is not present in the desert why because the deserts are the areas where nothing grows which is a barren region where nothing grows grows and aridity means dryness is one of the chief characteristics of a desert and therefore these are also known as an arid landforms so the deserts are the region barren regions of the world where nothing grows in the world in fact our general idea of a desert is where the vast stretch of a sand instead of water sea of a sand is there instead of ocean sea of a water this there is a vast stretches of sand but this is not how exactly the desert is geographical definition of a desert where nothing goes grows and therefore because nothing grows there are no speed breakers for the wind that is there are no wind breakers in the terms of large trees and therefore such kind of a here the wind becomes a major agent of erosion and these landforms are mostly shaped by the winds these are known as the desert landforms of the world now if we look at the first before understanding the desert landforms of the world if we look at the distribution of the deserts there are two types of deserts in the world one is the hot deserts of the world and the other are the cold deserts of the world so there are two major kind of deserts one are the hot deserts that is our general deserts and the other are cold deserts now how to distinguish this or how is there anything called as a cold desert yes if you remember if you in india itself india is a vastly diverse climatic country rajasthan what is it it is in a hot desert cold desert leh ladakh plateau region it is what a cold desert that is again there nothing grows but it is covered by just white sand cold extreme cold temperature temperatures now why now coming at the our general idea of a desert is generally an hot desert so coming at the hot deserts of the world if you look if you look at the de distribution of deserts on the world map we'll see the deserts are located between some specific latitudes that what are the specific latitudes of the location of a desert these are if we consider this as a world world geograph world map then we will see that the deserts are located only at some specific latitudes most of the deserts if this is the center of the world that is the equator most of the deserts are located between 15 degrees to 30 degrees in both the hemispheres that is they are located if we see this if we draw a diagram here considering 0 degrees 30 35 degrees most of the deserts are located in this belt in the 15 to 30 degree latitude now because we have not done the climatology still i will give you an idea this is the area where this are high pressure belt that is here the air is coming down now because the air is coming down on the person you are we are feeling higher pressure so they are known as an high pressure belt on other hand this is area the equator is an area of a low pressure because here the air is going up therefore we are not feeling the pressure of an air what we call in geography as a low pressure belt so the areas are the high pressure the deserts are the areas of high pressure belt located between some 15 to 13 degree latitude in both the hemispheres so what are the major deserts of the world it this it is the these are the major deserts of the world
Now you see these are located on which side of the continent except for Indian deserts if you see the location of the deserts they are having a specific kind of a location that they are mostly located on which side eastern side or the western side of the continents. What is their location? They are mostly located on west, west, west its extension there west western side western side western side even in india the western side of the but we are say of our country not the continent now why are the deserts located only on the western side if you still study geography when you study oceanography we will see that they are washed by currents which are cold currents that is they come from the polar regions and wash them so water here is extremely cold When we will study the climatology, we will see that here the winds are blowing offshore. What do you mean by the winds are blowing offshore? That means the wind blows from the continent towards the sea. So, continents towards the ocean. So, here the wind is blowing offshore. That means the wind is blowing from the land towards the sea, not from sea towards the land. When the wind is blowing from sea towards the land, the wind brings moisture along with it. Because it is blowing over the sea, it takes up water vapors and it comes and hits the land and gives rainfall. But when the wind is blowing from the land towards the sea, when the wind is blowing in this way, that is from land towards the sea the land is a dry region such a wind is known as offshore therefore the wind does not have any kind of a moisture because it is originating in the dry region therefore it is growing offshore and such is a dry wind and obviously the dry wind won't give any kind of a rainfall so the deserts are having three characteristics these deserts are the hot deserts of the world they are they lie in high pressure belt in the horses latitude belt we'll come to that in climatology now in the high pressure belt you remember there is no rainfall and in the low pressure belt there is a rainfall because for rainfall to occur the air has to rise up because when it rises upwards it gets cooled and cooling results into formation of water vapor into water and still rising and cooling results into water into water into ice so the I, more air rises up jitni hawa upar jayegi utni zyada barish hogi on other hand the air when it comes down it gets heated up Jitna zada heating up, the more it gets heated up, it has more moisture holding capacity. And because of heating up, it can hold up more water. It does not, with more water, it does not give rainfall. Why? Because you consider cooling results into contraction. When you are contracting something, the ability of the vessel to hold, hold something is reduced. And extra thing comes out from the vessel. But if the vessel is increasing because of heating, expansion the ability of a vessel to hold the water will increase same thing you apply to the clouds the clouds when they are going upwards they cool and therefore they give up extra moisture in the form of rainfall if they cool very much at a certain very high height they give out extra moisture in the form of ice but in the high pressure belt we say the air does not go up the air comes down and when the air comes down it gets warmed warmed when uska moisture holding capacity increases and the air does not give any kind of a moisture therefore in this regions there is no rainfall second what is the second chance of a rainfall if the wind is blowing from sea towards the land then it will bring some moisture and give a rainfall but here the wind is blowing from land towards the sea therefore no rainfall Third is cold currents. You will understand that what is the role of a cold current. Cold current also does, do not up, uh, allow precipitation of, of rainfall or precipitation. That is no rainfall is allowed by the cold current. Why it is? We will take, take a look at it in the climatology. 
uh, in the oceanographic part now the, this three are the chief characteristics of the deserts which lie in the mid lat which lie in the between 30 to 35 degrees or between 15 to 30 degrees such kind of deserts are known as hot deserts because this this is the 30 degrees the hot desert belt of the world so these deserts are known as the hot deserts now why why there are hot deserts or we can what do we can say location on the basis of location you remember the three points of the hot deserts first they are they they lie in the high pressure belt known as forces latitude or we can say they lie in a high pressure belt the second is they lie in the belt zone of offshore trade winds or the trade winds blow from land towards the sea that is the trade winds are offshore zameen se samandar ki taraf pani ja raha hai isliye air is very dry and the third is they are washed by the cold currents these are the characteristics of the hot deserts and therefore in they are always located on the western side of the continents why not eastern side because you see the trade winds are blowing always will always blow from east towards the west if they are blowing if they are present if they are blowing from east towards the west the eastern side will always get rainfall till the time they reach western side there is no amount of water there is no source of extra water on the land there is no sea in between and therefore they do not have a source of moisture till the time till the time they reach the western side they are exhausted of any amount of moisture and therefore no rainfall same thing happens in rajasthan region that is water comes from here gives very heavy rainfall monsoon winds to the eastern coast and jaise jaise andar aata hai that is the more it goes, goes to the interiors of the india there is less and less rainfall because exhaustion of moisture and till the time it reaches delhi most of the moisture has been exhausted and till the time it reaches in rajasthan there is no moisture so the northwestern part of india gets very very less rainfall because the, there is no source and the all the trade winds all the winds are offshore on other hand had the desert had this locations been in the eastern side of the continents then obviously there would have not been desert this in the climatology we will understand and you have this in the climatology we will get that we will have with these are all the areas of continuous rainfall in the world so okay so what are the characteristics of the hot deserts now what are these hot deserts so before that what are the characteristics of the hot deserts and they are known as trade wind deserts because they lie in the trade wind belt so hot deserts or the trade wind deserts lie in the high pressure belt trade winds blow offshore and the third is they are washed by cold currents they are washed by cold current so these are the three reasons why the deserts are located on the western side of the continents such deserts are known as hot deserts or they are known as the trade wind deserts they trade wind deserts so these are the trade wind deserts they lie in the high pressure belt on the western side of the continents where the trade winds blow offshore and they are washed by the cold currents now if we look at if we look at the different kind of a deserts what are the different deserts they, it is these are the mojave desert usa it is the sonoran desert mexico 
this it, there is forget about this black lines they were just to show you the trade winds this is atacama desert south america in chile the most the driest desert in the world jahan pe the rainfall is just 5 cm it is the driest desert in the world now you know the other kind of a desert sahara desert the biggest desert this is the arabian desert associated with arabian nights this is kalahari desert this is the kalahari desert nabib desert namib desert west australian desert or we can say we can just write the great australian desert australian desert and the desert of india that is the thar desert thar desert now mojave desert is in which state of usa where is the silicon valley situated where is the hollywood situated los angeles it lies in the california it is entirely a desert region not entirely some most of the parts of the california is a desert region los angeles is a desert you just see the progress this countries have made that they have converted the deserts into one of the biggest entertainment centers of the world so the different kinds of a desert now for the match the column they may ask you which of the following deserts are washed by the which cold currents so the blue marks the cold currents and i am writing in blue so that you will understand the south america the sorry the north american desert and the mexican desert are washed by california current it is this atacama desert is washed by the famous current known as peruvian current why i say famous current because it decides the famous and one of the most important aspects of indian monsoon this current can affect our monsoon this current can affect our economy in the terms of el nino and la nina so the peruvian desert and because it was discovered by humboldt it is known as humboldt current the sahara desert obviously you know it is washed by the canaries current the nabib desert is washed by venezuela current it is washed by venezuela current now kalahari desert obviously the same part why it is famous the famous movie is based on this it is a where the diamonds are found and the blood diamond is based on the story here of the kalahari desert australian desert is washed by west australian current west australian current so you are we are we are answering here three questions the first question is why the deserts are located on the western side of the continents the second question is desert and the countries deserts and the continents and the third question is the desert and the match the column corresponding cold currents so mojave desert or sonoran desert by the californian current atacama desert the driest desert in the world by the peruvian current arabian desert sahara desert by the canary current 
Nabib Desert by Beneguela Current. So Beneguela Current is found where? It is found in Africa. Which part of Africa? The southern part of Africa. That is after the equator. West Australian Desert by the West Australian Current. And as I told you, these all are the cold currents. So you are answering one more question here. The fourth one, which of the following are the cold currents? So what you find here are the cold currents. Draw this diagram. Now, on other hand, there are some of the deserts which are found on the leeward side of a mountain. What do you mean by leeward side of a mountain? That if this is a mountain, the mountain is so high that is the winds cannot cross the mountain, wind which come, they cannot cross the mountain and give rainfall here. Even if they cross the mountain, while crossing the mountain, they rise upwards. They rise, uh, raise upwards creating a low pressure belt and as I told you they gave very very heavy rainfall on this side of a mountain that is on the windward side of a mountain. But the other side, this side is known as leeward side which is which does not face the wind. The leeward side does not get any rainfall. Why it does not get any rainfall? Because the while rising here, the winds will give rainfall. It will result into formation of a cloud. It will give very heavy rainfall because there is decrease in the temperature. But while crossing the mountain, the wind will come down. Coming down, increase in the temperature. And as I told you, it develops into a high pressure belt. And therefore, no rainfall in this region. So, it does not give any kind of an rainfall in this region. Therefore, these are the dry regions. So, can we say that the western ghats, the western side of the western ghats gets very very heavy rainfall. Is this analogy true or is this reason true that it lies on the west windward side? Yes. And is there a semi-arid region in the western eastern side of the western ghats where there is no rainfall? Yes, there is. In fact, regular issue, farmer suicide issue, agriculture crisis, where it is? It is on the eastern side of the western guards because as you move towards the east from the western guard, the amount of rainfall goes on decreasing and therefore why one of the geographical factor it is, this is one of the geographical factor that this area does not get rainfall because it lies on the which side of the western guard? Leeward side. Similarly, there are many many deserts, there are some of the deserts which lie so much in the interior of the continents that the time, till the time winds reach there, there is no moisture for the winds to give rainfall. One of this desert, I will mark this in red color, these deserts are, these deserts are Patagonia desert. Already marked in red, I will mark in black color. This result, deserts are the Patagonia desert. Turkestan desert. And Gobi desert. Why is the Patagonia desert, which is the mountain system here? Andes mountain system. So the winds, this is a trade wind belt, this is a westerly wind belt. Trade winds are from east towards the west. Westerly is from west towards the east. So the westerly winds cannot cross the mountains and is resulting into, now this, they do not lie in the tropical belt, they lie in higher latitudes, temperate belt. And therefore, there are cold deserts. So, it results into Patagonia desert. It results into Turkestan desert. It results into Gobi desert of 
विच कंट्री मंगोलिया वन ऑफ द इंपॉर्टेंट करंट अफेयर्स बेस्ड दिस इयर प्राइम मिनिस्टर विजिटेड मंगोलिया एंड इनफैक्ट ही वॉज प्रेजेंटेड अ हॉर्स विच ही डिड नॉट ब्रिंग टू इंडिया सो the this are the now if the question is why is, is this effect this is due to the rain shadow effect such deserts are too much in the interior of the continents and these are known as continental deserts now the patagonia desert is due to the rain shadow effect of the andes mountain system so the rain shadow leeward side is a rain shadow zone and therefore does not receive the rainfall it is a rain shadow zone and therefore does not receive the rainfall so it does not receive the rainfall so the patagonia desert this desert is due to the rain shadow effect of the andes now you see here there are numerous mountains himalayas tenshan kunlun shan altai shan pamir not there are numerous mountains here and therefore the winds also cannot go to the interiors resulting into the desert of central asia now this covers the country of turkmenistan kazakhstan kyrgyzstan this entire region was the region of turks people of turk origin therefore it was once upon a time known as turkestan so this desert is known as a desert of turkestan or what we say as the desert of central asia and this desert is the gobi desert of mongolia so this are the mid continental deserts or because they lie high up in the latitudes they are known as the mid latitude desert so the second kind of a desert are the continental or mid latitude deserts so the second type of the deserts are one we have done are the hot deserts while the second one are the cold deserts why cold because extremes of temperature is seen these are known as mid latitude deserts or continental deserts example is the patagonia desert due to rain shadow effect of the andes due to the rain shadow effect of the andes due to the rain shadow effect of the andes these are known as mid latitude or continental desert now this these are the two types of deserts now based on the landscape can we divide as i said you what is our general idea of a desert that it is a sea of a sand but what is the geographical definition is there is a sea of sand in ladakh is there a sea of sand all over the rajasthan or sand is there only in the western part of rajasthan jaisalmer bikaner district that is the a desert does not necessarily mean the sea of a sand in fact desert is any area where nothing can grow so the types of the desert landscapes are based on landscape that is how does the land look like we have hamada we have hamada or rocky deserts or what we say it is a rocky desert what do you mean by rocky desert large rocks grand canyon if you must have seen the movie 127 hours many movies large rocks are seen nothing is seen there just bare large rocks such deserts are known as an rocky desert 
which consists of their large rocks. Their large rocks. The second one is an stony desert. It is a stony desert. And it is known as the Reg or Stony Desert. Instead of rocks here, there will be small stones, pebbles will be there. That is not big, no larger rocks, but the pebbles will be there in this region. Why they are formed? Large rocks cannot be moved by the air. Pebbles roll along the ground by the strong winds. Wind uh, sands they flow along with the wind. So rocks are swept clear, pebbles are deposited somewhere, sand is deposited further far away. So further away the sand is being deposited, resulting into formation of a three kind of a desert based on the wind or uh, action of the wind. Such a stony desert is known as in the Egypt and Libya, it is known as. Such a stony, stony desert in the Egypt and Libya is known as Serir, is known as Serir, S-E-R-I-R, -R. such a desert in Egypt and Libya is known as an Serir. So what is a Reg? Don't get confused with an Hindi word. Reg ya Reit is sand, but here in the desert is Reg, is a stony desert not a sandy desert. Now the third is, third is Arg. Now this is our general idea of a desert that it is a sandy desert. It is a sandy desert that is made up of large Undulating sand dunes. It is an it is an sandy desert means sea of a sand here. It is an just made up of sand, a sea of a sand. Two more terms. One is a badland topography. One is a badland topography. What is this badland topography? This badland topography means in the areas where there is no vegetation or very less vegetation is there. And the areas why there is less vegetation, it means that it is not getting any kind of a rainfall. So in such an areas, when the rain occurs because the soil cover is loose, soil takes away much of the, the rainwater surface runoff. As we said, seasonal rivers surface runoff takes away much of the soil more and more soil is gets washed away with the rainwater resulting into formation of large cracks large grooves large dip not exactly depression large grooves we can say in the desert these are known as gullies and ravines gully and ravines so it results into such an area which there is a there is a gully and ravine, it is not fit for human settlement, it is not fit for agriculture. Such a topography is known as a badland topography. Which area in India is famous as a badland topography? The area of Chambal, Chambal ki ghatiya or the Chambal basin is famous for a badland topography. In USA also such a topography is named as badland topography. So the name we are calling here is badland. So, the badland topography, semi-arid regions of India, semi-arid regions of the world. So, whenever there is rainfall, there is gully erosion, there is a ravine erosion. What are these gullies and ravines we will study while doing Indian geography. So, it results into formation of an badland topography. That is erosion leads to, to gullies. and ravines.
erosion leads to the formation of gullies and ravines erosion leads to the formation of r a v i n e s gullies and ravines so these are the different kinds of uh, topographies this now just to show you the top 3 large stones wind will wash away the stones of the whatever the this is there then the size of the stones will go on re reducing it will be mostly pebbles and then later on mostly sand sands in the form of sand dunes so hamada reg and arg desert so it is uh, the hamada reg and the arg desert now how does the erosion in the deserts take place the desert obviously the desert landform are due to both erosion and weathering weathering will first weaken the landforms erosion will transport the landforms so how does the desert erosion takes place very different from the fluvial erosion or we can say the process of the de desert erosion the process of an desert erosion now the process of a desert erosion you look here if this is an sand which is present here this entire is a landform which is made up of sand now if the wind is blowing through this landform it will obviously remove the sand jab bhi tez hawa chalti hai can we see it we cannot see visibility reduce kyunki hawa mein bahut zyada dust particles are there hawa mein bahut zyada dhool mitti hoti hai why because the more stronger the wind becomes it has more erosive power it takes away in the in whatever comes in its path generally but it not, does not happen that aap ja rahe ho and the suddenly a rock comes and hits you you are not that it, it is not present that when there is a extremely strong wind you are wearing advised to go wear helmet and go no obviously you will protect your eyes you will cover your nose because the dust particles are there such a strong winds are common in the desert region but that does not mean they will take the rock when the wind becomes such mo so much powerful it becomes powerful during cyclones it may be, it becomes powerful during tornadoes which we are going to study in the climatology that they can uproot the houses also and take it but generally the stronger the wind more faster the wind it is more dusty it is more sandy so the wind will blow here the topmost layer of the sands it will keep on blowing the topmost layer of the sands this process results into formation of an hole like process such is known as an process of a deflation so what is the process of deflation blowing away how does the desert erosion takes place by the process of deflation deflation is the process in the deserts that is blowing away of the sand the second is the sand when it when the strong wind is blowing aandhi jab chal rahi hai then obviously we are heard by the small particles which are there in the winds fortunately unfortunately in the areas which are habitable that is where people live on the roj nahi chalti but in the desert region because there is no tree the such a strong winds always carry the sand particles and the sand particles they come and hit the if the sand particle this is a rock they will come and hit the rock and as a result they they will keep on eroding the rock 
तो सच इफेक्ट इज नोन एज अ सैंड ब्लास्टिंग इफेक्ट सो द सेकेंड प्रोसेस ऑफ अ डेजर्ट इरोजन इज sand blasting or abrasion and the third process is attrition attrition so here what is the deflation deflation is lifting and blowing away of the loose materials by the winds materials by the wind what is sand blasting sand blasting is when the is the process of abrasion that is the sand particles come and hit the rock humne already kiya what is an abrasion when the particles come and hit the bank of a river that is abrasion so river in the process of water in the process of wind abrasion will be some other particle coming and hitting the stable rock stable structure so rock is a stable structure in the wind so the particle coming and hitting the winds so sand bar sand bar blasting is sand particles is the process of abrasion where sand particles carried by the wind hit the rock hit the rocks now sand blasting again as i told you sand blasting mein it will never happen that the rock will the sand particles or the rock particles will come and hit your top here the wind has a limited power wind is very very strong agent of erosion near the ground surface but as you are going up the wind does not become that much strong agent of erosion why because the wind does not have power to lift like water like glacier wind does not have power to take the particles along with it lift wind will lift the sand it will the bigger stones will roll in the wind but it will won't come and fly with the wind so as a result sand blasting is effective only at a certain depth or at a certain height from the ground surface generally 180 cm maximum 3 feet 6 feet from the ground surface maximum we can say is a 3 feet from the ground surface therefore you if you notice next time even if you go in the arid rajasthan region or arid or semi arid regions of india you will see the poles electric poles they are covered by metal castings that is they are covered by metal only on the only on the lower part the same thing will happen if you go to the leeward side of a western ghat that is the semi arid regions of the peninsula plateau so therefore the why the metal though not related to geography but why the metals why the poles electric poles or telephone poles or any other poles are covered by metal casting because the sand blasting is effective only near the ground surface at a certain height from the ground surface because the sand is an ero sand is an agent of an erosion effective agent of erosion only near the ground surface the third is attrition now what was attrition if you remember when the particles rub against each other because of constant rubbing they get reduced into minor pieces that is an attrition so what is attrition here wear and tear of wear and tear of particles because as they rub against each other
as they rub against each other. The wear and tear of the particles as they rub against each other is the attrition. Now you find the odd one out. Sand blasting or abrasion was it present in the wind or wind cycle of erosion? Uh, in the fluvial cycle of erosion, yes. It say it is present even in the wind. Attrition, was it present in the fluvial cycle of erosion? Yes, it is present even in the wind. What is the different here is a deflation. What was different in the fluvial cycle of erosion was a solution. Wind cannot dissolve, water cannot deflate. So this you remember, wind is associated with deflation. That is a different thing. Water is associated with the solution. So these are the two different types of the process of the desert erosion. Now coming to the desert erosion, there will be some very very interesting landforms made by the desert erosion. So we will again study the landforms in the terms of erosional landforms and in the terms of depositional landforms. Erosional landforms and depositional landforms. And again, I don't expect much questions in the mains examination from this. So, we will just have an overlook of what is an erosional landform, what is a depositional landform. If you want extra material, then you can refer to the NCRTs also. But what I will give will is more than sufficient for writing an answer also. That is, if they won't ask you write a short note in 200 words only on one specific landforms, they will ask you either if they ask you what do you mean by desert erosion, what are the different kind of landforms in the desert. So the first kind of an erosional landform, again a very very interesting landform made by the deserts. How to make a geography interesting? Next time when you travel, next time you travel, first thing is the traveling is one of the big, biggest teacher in geography. So whenever you will travel, just have a look at the surrounding landforms. Try to guess what are the different landforms. When you look, when we will finish climatology, have a look at the clouds and see, try to guess what are the clouds, but don't just keep on looking at the clouds also. Have a, again, okay. So what are the different kinds of an Erosional landforms. The first is erosional landform. The first kind of an erosional landform, one of the best kind of an erosional landform is the mushroom rock. Mushroom rock. Now you see this is a very interesting landform because it is found if this is an entire rock structure found in the desert region on the ground this is a ground surface as I told you the desert is an area where the wind is the most effective agent of an erosion and because the wind is a most effective agent of an erosion the wind there are two characteristics of wind first the wind is an effective agent of erosion only at a certain tie height from the ground surface the second is wind does not have any direction unlike water water flows only in one direction is the water ka erosion will be only in one direction headward erosion means that way only if this is a channel, it will be the channel of a wind unless some tectonic activity occurs or due to flooding the wind changes its shape. But V-shaped valleys will be V-shaped, they will go linearly. It won't be V-shaped valley, 
it is going straight v shape valley but the wind does not have any direction that is why the wind results wind erosion wind will erode this rock from all the sides and as a result of this the rock the wind first thing is the wind will flow from all directions the second thing is wind will erode or maximum erosion will occur at the base of a rock and therefore the rock will be formed somewhat like this such kind of a rock looks like an umbrella shape or looks like a mushroom shaped rock so that you can even stand sometimes behind the below the rock resulting into and kind of a rock known as an mushroom rock so why why because it is a mushroom shaped rock such a kind of a wind ear landform is known as mushroom shaped rock now why is the mushroom shaped rock found mushroom shaped rock is found because because wind erodes erodes the base of a rock from all sides now why does it erode the base of a rock because the wind is an active agent of or we will write this two as different points base of a rock because wind is most powerful agent only at only at certain only till certain height height from ground from the ground and the second is because the wind does not have any direction because wind does not have any direction any specific direction any specific direction therefore the rock the base of a rock is eroded from all sides it results into formation of an it results into formation of an interesting feature which is known as an mushroom rock or rock or rock pedestal or rock pedestal or or goar in sahara desert or goar in sahara desert in the sahara desert are you getting why the this kind of a rock has been transferred to such shape because first only the base will be maximum eroded and the second is the because wind is the most powerful agent only till a certain height from the ground therefore the wind erodes the base only and because it does not have any direction specific direction therefore eroded from all sides such is known as a rock pedestal or guar in sahara desert or mushroom rocks 
such kind of rocks are known as mushroom rocks or guar or rock pedestals the second kind of an erosion is suppose there is an second kind of an erosional landform is Now this is again a different very interesting kind of a rank form. Now it consists of a horizontally bedded that is the horizontal soft rocks, horizontal layers of uh, horizontally bedded alternate layers of soft hard, soft hard rocks and as a result of this you see how the rock surfaces. It consists of a rock. in which there is a layer of softer rock, then hard rock, softer rock and hard rock. So the first layer is the layer of a soft rock, this is a layer of hard rock, this is layer of soft rock, this is a layer of a hard rock, layer of a hard rock. or you can say it can be even otherwise that is there can be a layer of an hard rock there can be a layer of an hard rock followed by soft rock again and hard rock hard rock, soft rock and I will just show you one more layer here that is again an hard rock. So Zugen is a kind of a topography when there is an alternate arrangement of hard and soft rock in which manner? Horizontal or vertical manner? Horizontal manner, this is an horizontal manner. Why I am saying horizontal or vertical manner? Because we are going to do one more topography later on. As a result of this, the wind will start eroding the hard rock little bit. The hard rock will get eroded and therefore the there will be erosion of a hard rock somewhere. Now when the soft rock is exposed, obviously the soft rock will be eroded much greater than the hard rock. Again the hard rock will be eroded much lesser than the soft rock. Same thing will happen here. Hard soft rock will be eroded much much greater than the hard rock. So there is an alternate layer of hard then soft and then again hard rocks and due to differential erosion, it will result into formation of a topography which looks like it will result into a formation of a topography which looks like a bottle of an ink. There such an interesting topography is known as Zugen. Now what is the importance? This Zugen serve as important highways because they will look if you draw in the 3D if we try to look in the 3D diagram, they will look somewhat like this. look somewhat like this. So this parts, the middle way which are here, 
they will serve as an highways they will serve as the ways through which you can go now from the exam point of view what you have to remember you can do not draw this di 3d diagram you can write jugend is a erosional landform erosional landform in which there is alternate arrangement meant of layer of hard and soft rocks hard and soft rocks in horizontal manner in an horizontal manner as a result of which it gives differential arrangement differential erosion of hard and soft rocks does what gives rise to to ridge mountain mountain like structure it gives to rise to ridge and furrow landscape it gives rise to ridge and furrow matlab pahad rasta pahad aur rasta ridge and furrow landscape or it gives rise to cap ink bottle topography it gives rise to cap ink bottle topography gives rise to cap ink bottle topography so what have to remember in the zugen again is when the remember z may line is horizontal so there is alternate arrangement of hard and soft rocks in an horizontal manner which results into capped ink bottle topography why because there is a differential erosion of hard and soft rocks we have already done that there is a differential erosion of an hard and soft rocks now come to the third kind of an topography that is an yardan come to the third kind of a topography that is yarda how do you write capital y this way now looking at the lower line of a y you remember just some shortcuts they will help you in the preliminary examination you remember when there is alternate arrangement of hard and soft rocks in an vertical manner y may line is vertical z may line is horizontal in a vertical manner the differential erosion gives rise to topography which is known as yardan now look here how it will look like in the yardan there is an alternate arrangement of layer of hard rocks soft rocks again hard rock soft rock hard rock i'll draw it little bit lower in 
in this there is an alternate arrangement of layer of an hard rock, soft rock, hard rock, soft rock, hard rock, soft rock. In which manner? In the horizontal manner. This is an hard rock, this is a soft rock. This is again hard rock H, soft rock S. Hard, soft, hard. As a result of this, what will happen? Which rock will be eroded much faster? The softer rocks will be eroded much faster as compared to the harder rocks. So, obviously the harder rocks will also get eroded, but the softer rocks will get eroded much faster. Again, the harder rocks will be eroded, but the softer rocks will get eroded much faster. Again, the harder rocks will be eroded and the softer rocks will get eroded much faster as compared to the harder rock. So, it will result into a kind of a topography which looks like a layer of alternate arrangement of hard and soft rock. Now, if I try to draw it in 3D, Will it look like this? That is, there is a ridge here. Of hard rocks. Then there is a layer of soft rocks. Then again hard rocks. Then there is a layer of soft rocks, hard rocks. Soft rock, hard rock, again and soft rock. Hard rock and soft rock. So, there will be differential arrangement of hard, soft, hard, soft, hard rocks. Such kind of a topography in which it looks like a mountain, then a road, mountain, road, mountain, road. So, such kind of an arrangement, soft rocks are eroded away to give rise to a natural highway in the desert. Such kind of an uh, are known as an yardangs. So, what are the yardangs? They are similar to ridge and furrow landscape in Jugend. The only difference is here there is alternate arrangement of hard and soft rocks in vertical manner, in vertical manner, in the vertical manner. So, they will have, they will have steep sides separating, separating narrow corridors, steep sides separating the narrow corridors, have steep sides separating the narrow corridors. These are known as an yardangs. Known as yardangs.